Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Nemesis here. I got my sunglasses on today because I can't really face this movie, but we're going to talk about it anyway. We are talking about a brand new movie out on Netflix right now from Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. So i um, looking forward to talking about this movie with uh, my co-host on Sloppy Spoilers, my good friend. I'm going to welcome in Shade Wing. How you doing, Hi. Shade Wing? Hey. Doing uh, pretty well. I don't know how well that I would be doing after watching this movie. <laughs> Because it was like, uh, the, well, there were, I was looking forward to this movie, and then I keep finding, like, just not looking for them, I keep finding things wrong with it the whole time I was watching it. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. See, now, I, I do have to admit, I am not the biggest zombie movie fan in the, you know, I'm not the biggest zombie fan in the world. Uh, I either love them or I hate them. You know, it's there's no middle ground for me. But, I hate the uh, zombie genre as a general rule. I mean, I, I just never really gotten yeah. into it. Um, but I kind of felt like, okay, this was interesting enough and different enough. And I wanted to see like Snyder do something that, that kind of looks like it played to his sensibilities a bit more. So I was kind of curious about this one. Yeah. And I do have to say that the, the, the new concept, see uh, the problem I always had with zombies was the slow moving zombies. I understood that they were this relentless force that could get you, right. but they just never were horrifying to me and then when 28 days later came out and you had the fast zombies and everything i was like okay this this is better you know so it, it made more sense to me you know world war z uh for all the faults that there were in that movie i didn't you know because it wasn't like the book uh right. i enjoyed that movie you know there was some good stuff to it um that said uh i'm gonna issue a trigger warning right here for all of you zach snyder fans this is not the review to watch it's like just thank you for tuning in. Please hit like and subscribe down below. And then you should probably move on because, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're not, you know, we're, we're, we're not going to be kind to this movie, unfortunately. And yeah. I say this as somebody who really was, you know, trying to be kind to it. I really was. I, I, and I didn't know what this movie was about. And uh, when I saw the initial artwork and everything, I was like, yeah, this could be interesting. And no, no, just no. So that said, um, let's hit. You know, we're going to do this a little bit different format. I'm not going to go through the whole plot of the movie. Um, basically, if I could sum up the plot, take Ocean's Eleven meets Aliens, the movie. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Meets uh, World War Z and throw in some Zack Snyderisms, And that's the plot of this movie, you know, so. <laughs> I will say that the concept actually is really good. I like the idea of a heist movie in a zombie infested city. I think that is a really neat idea. Um, the problem is the execution. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and that's a basic plot. I mean, uh, I guess if I could sum it up is that there's the, this team, Basisa leads the team in there. He's sold on the fact that there's this money they want to get and they're going to go in there and get this money for this guy before the whole Las Vegas is going to get nuked because it's mm -hmm. infested by zombies now. And uh, there's some other stuff that ensues, but we're going to get into that in and later on when we talk about some other stuff with the movie. But that's the basic plot. I mean, wouldn't you say that's basically what's going on? Um, yeah, more or less. It's a heist film with zombies, and that's all you need to know. Yeah, okay. And and so that really gets us into... Um, we have talked a lot about, on Sloppy Spoilers, Zack Snyder's films. And it's now... This is why I issued the trigger warning. It's now becoming apparent that Zack Snyder has a formula. And unfortunately, this formula is, is, is not turning out to be good. You know, he had... 300, which was a great movie. He had Watchmen, which was had some problems, but I still think it's a good movie. Mm -hmm. But it's becoming apparent, you know, and you look around, it's not just us saying, there's a lot of people who are saying it, is that Zack Snyder turns out films with great visual effects, great action scenes, and then the rest of the movie is very flawed. And uh, I would say, you know, before we, we launch into the different aspects, I'd say this movie fits right into that formula. What do you think? Yeah, um, Hideo Kojima did a really, what I thought was a really interesting post, and he described, one of the words he used to describe this movie was Snydering, and I'm like, that is like the perfect word to use for any Zack Snyder movie, because only Zack Snyder does the stuff that Zack Snyder does, and, and it's very clear that he has a, a formula, or he has, you know, tropes that you kind of expect only Snyder to do. I mean, there is a certain visual style to it, there's a certain you know, I want to do these things because they're cool, not because they make sense uh, mm -hmm. kind of attitude towards it. I mean, you definitely see it in the Snyder Cut. You see it, you know, in Batman versus Superman. I mean, you, you see it in all these movies that 
you know, people tend to point at as being like the biggest masterpieces he's ever done, uh, quote unquote. Uh, and, and it's and oh yeah, and the musical numbers that he's always doing, which are basically like mini music videos, uh, you know, rather than actually using the music to tell the story, which we'll get into. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, we're gonna get to the music in a, in a little bit, but I, I did want to give the man his due for the stuff he does well. So I, I wanted to hit the yeah. good first, and then we'll go, you know, we'll go into the stuff that we didn't like. So um, first of all, um, I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna separate these because there, there wasn't a lot of good I found in this movie. So I want to talk about them separately. I want to talk about the uh, effects first, the visual effects. I thought that this movie. Uh, as far as the shooting, um, the cinematography, and the look of the movie, the movie was was beautiful at points, you know. And I got to give him credit for that. We have harped on or bagged on Zack Snyder at times. I think for uh, the washout colors and palettes he used in other films, I didn't see that in this one. I thought it was, um, I, I'm going to say, almost Suicide Squad esque at times, like oversaturated. I don't mind that. I like that. You know, there are some people that hated that, but but a lot of the uh, the the visuals and the effects were incredible. I mean, that zombie tiger was incredibly well done. I thought yeah. um, a lot of the the visual effects on the zombies themselves. So um, I thought that was really really well done. Uh, I thought he had a good eye for what he wanted to do. He captured it well. I even thought the ruins of Las Vegas were great. I'm sure that most of that was CGI, but it was pretty seamless. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought I thought it looked really, 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 really good. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I, I will say I love the the whole neon look to this movie. Um, it fits very well with the Las Vegas theme. I will say that he made Las Vegas look like Las Vegas. Uh, it did. It looked. Yeah. You know, it, it looks like what Las Vegas would look like if you know you completely destroyed it and had it overrun with zombies. I think that that was great. Um, yeah. I think the world building in the sense of um, okay, you know, you have this place that's walled off and. You know, nobody can go in and out. Okay, that that's really interesting, and you can you can really play with that. And I, and and even if the execution wasn't there, I will say the idea of it is really good. And, and this is one of the things with Snyder; he has great ideas. The zombie yeah. tiger is a great idea. Um, and, and uh, I think you were saying? he gets. I get think he gets the visuals in his mind, and he always gets what's in his mind out on the film. And I got to yeah. give the man credit for that. You know, you see that in all his movies. You see it in Three Hundred. You see it in Watchmen. You see it in uh, his various DC movies. You see it in this movie. You know, he sees what he wants to, you know, he he gets the visual part very well. It's the storytelling, I think, that he falls down on. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as long as there's a good visual component to it or it's a concept, um, he's usually going to do very well. With it. Um, it's just the other elements that, um, and I will say, I, I think it, that, you know, it, for certain people, if you're not as inclined uh, towards, you know, the, the writing code as a DT likes to talk about it. Um, if you're not as in tune to that as we are, it's possible that you could definitely watch this and get and, and enjoy it in a uh, turn your brain off kind of way. But just keep oh. in mind, you have to turn your brain off a lot <laughs> to, to get absolutely all the problems of this film. And, and I will admit, you know, earlier in my life and, and still even today, I mean, there's movies where I just get a beer and some wings and my brain gets completely turned off and I watch some horrible movies and I love them. You know, I'm like cheering from all the way. You know, there was one that I watched a couple of weeks ago that is not a good movie. Uh, Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Horrible yeah, movie. But <laughs> but you can watch it and enjoy it. So, you know, yeah. so I, you know. Yeah, the Expendables is another one that, that I would think of offhand. Yeah. So nobody out there think that we don't have our movies that we, we watch as well. But yeah, this, um, but definitely if, if you just want to sit back and watch zombies getting killed and not worry about anything else, this is a good movie to watch. You know what I mean? And, and there's some fun action, which brings us into the other thing is Zack Snyder seems to be, uh, definitely making a name for himself consistently uh, has been for a while and continues to do so, which is action sequences. You know, at some point, um, you know, at first you could say it's, the, you know, the graphics design or whoever's doing the set design, whoever's doing the fight choreography, but he's either hiring the right people consistently or he's got the right vision who are, and then hiring the right people who are realizing mm -hmm. his vision because the fight sequences in here, um, now, I don't think they're realistic. I have some serious problems with a lot of what's going on, 
but they're entertaining as hell. You yeah. know, it, it's they really look great. Good they, stuff. they look great, and they look like a lot of fun when you get into that stuff. So you know, I I, yeah. I can't fault them for that. Yeah. Now the only problem I have, and once again, now I I am going to be nitpicky here. Okay, this is a nitpicky thing. This is a work of fiction with zombies and everything. So, and I completely understand that. However, all right, I'm putting on my realism hat for a second. Hollywood more and more is asking me to put aside uh, disbelief, you know, or suspend uh, disbelief for some things that are pretty incredible. And right off the bat, this movie hits us with some things. And, and visually, once again, I'm saying visually it looked great. But, and we're going to talk about with this, with action sequences, we have a car, this this crappy-ass Buick, runs into a military vehicle hauling a zombie, you know, the the mother, the father of all zombies. And the two of them destroy each other. And I'm like, okay, first of all, that's not how physics work, okay? Then, throughout the movie, people are firing nine, what looked like 9 millimeter Glocks I don't know what kind of, of rounds these people are using, but I have never personally seen a nine millimeter that can go through uh, three people, a wall. Uh, you know, it's just like it's just tearing through everything. I'm like, what kind of hand cannon are these people using? You know, and it's like, I, I think the problem I'm having here is it's becoming apparent that a lot of the people doing stunts or are, are planning this stuff out have never fired a firearm in their life they have no idea what a firearm can actually do because it's like there is no way a nine millimeter round is going through i mean it might not go through one head you know it's like if you fire it let alone three people and then through a wall and through something and it's like what what are they doing that guy's shoulder just got ripped off from the recoil so I don't know, what, what did you think about the uh, the realism of a lot of the stuff? And, and I, this is nitpicky. I am going to admit that. So. Yeah, I, I think you're probably going to know a lot more about the, as far as the firing of the guns to me. But, you know, even to me, you can sort I was sort of looking at the whole scene with the uh, with the truck uh, running into the car. And I'm like, no, that that car is getting mowed over and they're just rolling right past. There is no way that you'd have an explosion like that. And then um, the whole scene after it, nobody. What really kind of got me is like none of the soldiers seemed to feel like they were soldiers to me. Um, and, and while I haven't really, you know, sort of the way they, that you have, I mean, I've, been, I've spent enough time around military people. It's like, that is not how military people act. They act like people in aliens. They act like people in full metal jacket. They do not yeah. act like this. And they certainly use better tactics than this. I mean, here you have these two guys that's like, okay, we have orders to get away. You know, do they take the truck that's nearby and seems to be in perfect working order and drive off? No. Thank you. They run into the <laughs> desert like morons. And then they get killed because, you know, they don't understand, like, basic tactics like, gee, maybe I ought to use high ground so I can see what's coming. You know, just, you know, basic, just basic things like this that you probably know more about than me. But even on a basic fundamental level, you're saying, no, this would not happen. And I think well, that's fundamentally a lot of my problem with it. It's not just that you know, the, certain things are happening that shouldn't be happening. It's that nobody's acting like a reasonable person would in the same situation. And that's what really is throwing me out. Not only that, the other thing I'm going to say is that um, before, well, before I say this, I will give them the choreography crew and Zack Snyder credit for this. They didn't repeat the Hollywood trope with the never ending magazine. There were actually magazine changes and people running out of bullets you know, running out of rounds in this movie. So I was like, yes. kudos to them for that. You know, so I, I will add a caveat though, is that sometimes when they run out of bullets, it's at a plot convenient moment. And you're sort of like, no way. This is purely because the, the this guy's got plot armor and they didn't want him to, get, to die at that point. <laughs> that woman yeah. should have shot uh, Burke uh, 2.0, you know, right through the freaking head through that glass. And and the only reason that she didn't is because the plot required her to run out of bullets. No, right. no other reason. If she had one bullet in there, that guy was dead. And and I would have and I would have cheered. <laughs> but hey, I, I gotta give credit where credit is due. It's like there are plenty of movies where I'm just like, what is this like a thousand round magazine that he's yeah. got in there? Um, that said, all of the soldiers in this movie are stormtroopers. They can't hit crap. Meanwhile, 
every single civilian in this movie, including the guy who picked up a gun, the German guy who picked up a gun for the first time in his life, are friggin' crack shots, making shots that are impossible. <laughs> look at my look at my eyes. <laughs> Trained people who have spent their year, you know, decades of their life dedicating themselves to shooting with firearms could not make the shots. These people are making every single shot on the run, off balance, into the head on a moving target. No, no way, never going to happen, doesn't happen. This is what, and I'm sorry, I'm going to get a little rant here. This is why people in real life think it's real for people to be able to shoot people in the leg, for people to be able to shoot people in the arm. It doesn't happen in real life, folks. It's not that easy to hit something with a rifle, let alone a handgun. When you're holding something one-handed that is, you know, jerking back of your hand, not to mention the fact that this thing is like um, a howitzer, you know, with how powerful it is in this movie. No, it's just, it doesn't happen that way. And so... And, and yeah, and yeah, these people with these impossible aiming skills uh, just keep, put, uh, you know, aiming at the um, alpha vamp uh, on the skull plate that he's got <laughs> instead of the huge eye holes that you could be shooting them through. I mean, yeah. that Oroch's most. And it would hit well, the hell, brain. Well, hell, with these hand cannons, they could have blown the guy's leg off. You know, it's just yeah. like yeah. fire, blow his leg off. And it's like you take the legs out. It's just like you don't have to worry about what the guy could do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and at that point, you can just shoot him in the head and he's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. so it, it was just absolutely ridiculous from that standpoint and the part that really got me was the fact that the trained soldiers couldn't hit anything they couldn't hit it they couldn't hit the broad side of a barn you know so i was like grandma you know, Tarkin apparently has been uh cutting their funding <laughs> yeah so i was like okay and 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 it's and it's consistent as and, and it's consistent throughout the whole movie not only that uh, I don't know if you picked up on this one, but I, I had to, this one was really stupid for me as well. Mm -hmm. At one point, uh, Las Vegas, at the beginning of the movie, there's an intro sequence with some horrible music, and we're going to get into the music in a minute, but uh, there's an intro sequence, and uh, military is fighting, police are fighting, and then they drop paratroopers in. Okay. As someone who has been dropped into comp, you know, not into combat, but, you know, done airborne school and everything, you pick safe landing zones. If some dude dropped me in, in the middle of a bunch of zombies, if I survive, I'm going back and I'm finding that pilot and I'm shooting him. You know, they yeah. would never have dropped them right in the middle. And so you have this scene where this guy is coming down into the middle of a bunch of zombies. He's firing. I'm like, dude, you're, you're screwed. You know, but I'm like, it was just so ridiculous. And it's like, I just wish, and this is not just Zack Snyder, all of Hollywood would bring somebody in again. You know, we need our Lee Ermey to be like 40 years younger yeah, and, yeah. and be able to consult on these movies again because it's just absolutely unrealistic. It is just yeah. so stupid. It, it, there's no way. Uh, and I will say, um, I, I've spent enough time around people who have made drops, even if I haven't done it or seen it. So I know what exactly what you're saying. And that moment where that one guy just dropped right in within a horde of zombies, I'm like, no way they wouldn't have done that. They probably would have dropped them if they were dropped them anywhere. They would have dropped them off top of a of a secure building um, yeah. that didn't have any zombies on it, you know. And yeah. that way, they have an entire. That way, you can have like snipers, and you can just you know headshot them from the roofs. You know See, that that would have made a lot more sense. And and that makes sense. But then once again, and this is me now. Granted, I I've got some uh, information that you know, the normal person wouldn't know, but that would be a completely different type of shoot and a completely different type of jump. The shoot that they were using is a shoot from a static line where you just jump out and you fall wherever you, you know, I mean, right. there's a, you have some very limited ability to show, choose where you're going, but it's, it's not uh, what's called a halo shoot, a high altitude, low opening shoot. And so, but that would absolutely be possible to do halo jump and bring it in and have them land on that absolutely realistic absolutely possible but it's obvious to me and this goes back to snyder is that snyder had the visual he's like wouldn't it be cool if we saw the parachute guy fall and he doesn't think about you know yeah it's a cool visual but some it's people not are visual thinkers and they just don't think out story logic very well and, and snyder yeah. seems to be one of those people and it's um and are we being 
are we overanalyzing a stupid movie? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but it's like at some point, don't we need to 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 ask for some at least some story consistency, some story logic? Because it's like it would make uh the danger even better, you know, if what we had was going on here. Even if you had uh you see the the high altitude guys going towards a high rise and then the mm -hmm. high rise gets swarmed by zombies, you know, it's like mm -hmm then you have something, you know, you would have yeah. something going on there. So, yeah, I mean, you can have the cool visuals and just find a better way to make it work. I mean, there's, there's no reason that you can't do something like that. Uh, you just have to think about it and find a way to explain it, or at least have an editor or somebody like that telling you, Hey, this would be completely implausible. You know, can we find another way to do this? You know, some kind of process where at least it's not, okay, we're, you know, we're halo dropping, you know, professional soldiers right into zombie hordes, you know, for no reason whatsoever. It's just yeah. ridiculous. And and while I would say, yeah, we, we do nitpick, I, I a lot of the stuff that I found in it, I wasn't even trying to, to nitpick that hard. It was just that I would notice things that just would take me out of the movie every other minute. It's just, you know, ridiculous, you know, to the extent to which this was not, uh, this story was not bad out at all. Okay. All right, folks. Now, <laughs> those were the good parts of the film <laughs> i would add one one more one more good part and that is there are a couple of good scenes i will say that the zombie tiger ma mauling burke was really good <laughs> that i was satisfied with that i mean there there are kind of moments and then there was the one moment where they decide to okay let's use a zombie uh to dig out all the traps um that are in front of the uh the safe i'm like okay that makes sense you know you have you know, basically a human shield and he's finding out all the stuff for you and you're not losing anything. That was smart. The only problem with that afterwards is that, you know, they wouldn't show like them disabling the traps or explaining why everybody's walking into that corridor without getting shot to death or, or hammered. Not only was that interesting, they applied mm -hmm. some story logic there that made sense because yeah. the first zombie they used, uh, it failed. And then they went and heated up a hand and found mm -hmm. out that the zombies were going after yeah. body heat. Yeah. So it's like there was some logical story, you know, yep. story logic in there. And uh, and so the whole scene made sense, you know, from within the story, you know. Yeah, it looked cool and it worked. I, I well, Those kinds of scenes are great. Not no problem. Absolutely. I, I definitely agree with you. I agree with you on both points. And, and I think there are a couple other things. You know, I, I think that the as far, even though, I was kind of up in the air in the whole uh, alpha zombie thing and everything. I thought the stuff with the female zombie and how she was posturing and 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 kind of protecting their territory, and everything. Mm -hmm. I kind of dug that concept, and I thought that uh, the the actress, her physicality was cool and everything, yeah. and the way she did it. So I, I enjoyed that. I thought it was pretty pretty cool, and and I kind of wanted to know more about what was going on there to the point where I was like, I kind of wish they had subtitled the snarls and everything, you know, <laughs> I, I really did. I was like, I, I want to know what they're talking about because it was, um, it's a different concept, even though, Oh, and we're going to get into this, I think, but the whole zombie rights thing and everything, I was like, no, no. When you're faced with the threat an existential threat, you, you don't worry about. You have to cipher anymore. more, but yeah, it's the only way to be sure. Yeah. Um, so let's let's go from eh to, to really bad. So the F eh for me was another thing that Snyder seems to be doing in a lot of his movies. And and uh, I don't know if he's doing this on purpose or if it's just the cultural zeitgeist and he's pulling from the cultural zeitgeist. But the dude is stealing stuff straight out of different pop culture things pop culture references and i understand that there are only so many stories to tell there are only so many th um you know and then they start you know you start reading enough stories you see similarities in a lot of different things but first of all the different weapons and the people here and everything from the saw to everything else that's straight from left for dead the the mm -hmm. game the video game it's left for dead the video game that you know and then uh really i said aliens the movie on purpose because um and that was the one that really struck struck out at me and i'm gonna let you talk about burke um mm -hmm. I, you know but the other one that really struck out at me it was there was a complete bishop moment at one time where they left the helicopter pilot with the helicopter up on top of the the 
that hotel, she leaves them. You know, they get up there after, you know, rescuing the woman from the, the alien queen. I mean, the zombies. And uh, then they get up there and she's gone, you know, and then she comes back, you know. It's like That was stupid for her. That was stupid as well, because it's like they, they established, oh, there are only nine minutes before they launch this thing. It's like, yeah. look, if you don't get out of there now, you're dead. Yeah. Because you, you not only you have to get out of the city, you have to get out of the radius of the blast and you yeah. have to get out of the radius uh, in which you're going to get flash fried by radiation. Um, she would have been smart leaving. I mean, the, the, the whole last, that whole last bit was, was stupid. And I will say the Batista's daughter in this movie um, got them all killed. She yeah. got them all she, killed. She was insufferable, but yep. I'm sure we'll talk about her. But yeah, and unlike in Aliens where they had a spaceship that could go like umpteen fast and get out of there, for some reason, a Las Vegas hotel had a Vietnam era Huey up on top of it. You know, a UH-1 helicopter. I don't even know what that... Who the hell flies a UH-1 anymore? You know, it's like I, I would have thought that they had an emergency helicopter up there. It would have been like one of those fancy, you know, rich people helicopters. You know, oh yeah, you know, not, not, not a military grade one. Yeah, I mean, if they were going to use military surplus, it would have been a Blackhawk. I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody that's flying a, U, uh, a Huey anymore. I mean, those things were old when I was in the army. You know, however many years ago that was. So, you know, I'm like. Did, did the did Netflix not have any more budget to rent a better helicopter? I mean, what what is going on? You know, it, it, it should have been it should have been a luxury helicopter of some kind. You know, the kind that has champagne in it. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, I don't know what the hell was going on with the the Huey up there, but yeah, they had this Huey. So there was no way in hell they were getting away from anything. And I, I will add one other thing, and this this is partly the the point on uh, dropping from raw culture. And partly that, I don't know if it was intentional or not. Uh, when they start the helicopter and it fails, the noise from the helicopter, it sounds like the Millennium Falcon's hyperdrive not working. I yeah. was laughing the whole time. And I don't know if it's because Lucas, you know, took it from an actual helicopter and I'm just hearing the same thing. Or if or if they just did something with the sound effects and they were going for on the cheap. I have no idea what they were doing. You had mentioned that. I, I will say that I've heard that sound in real life. So mm -hmm. I think that it's a real sound from like, you know, a failure of a turbine or something like that. But yeah, it was funny. Um, so that was the one aliens thing that I picked up on. And then uh, I'll be honest, I didn't pick up on this one. I'm going to let you hit it. Uh, the Burke, the Burke stuff, which was even more obvious. I don't even know how I didn't hit this one. Yeah, the Burke, the, the Burke character. I mean, he's such an obvious, uh, the, the security guy was very, you know, I, I understand like, okay, you can't trust this guy because he's working for the company, et cetera. And he's got his own motives. But the problem is, is like the whole, the whole motives and, and the whole plan was stupid because it turns out that the heist wasn't even about the money. They did not need to go into the safe at all and get the money because what they really wanted was the head of one of the alpha zombies, uh, the, the zombie queen. That was the whole thing that they were after. So it was very much like aliens where their whole idea is to try to weaponize the uh, the zombie head, you know, because of course that always works, you know, weaponizing monsters is never goes wrong ever. Uh, but in aside from that, why do you recruit these guys to do this job? Also, you can go in to get the zombie head. Wouldn't it made more sense to get like a crack elite team to go in there and, and just kind of one of the zombies, you know, behead her and bring the thing back? Why do you need to go through this song and dance of hiring these amateurs, basically, people that have no experience going into this thing and are not trained for this? You know, why do you get these guys, and especially the lock picker? If you're not even, don't even need to go in the safe, why do you need this, 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 this guy who, you know, really is uh, lunch meat <laughs> to these zombies because he has no way of defending himself? Uh, you know, uh, we see that he gets a little better later, but... I mean, all of this is pointless because they didn't even care about the money. If it was something else that was in the safe that would require them having to go in there, like maybe there's a certain zombie trapped in the safe, you know, we're going to go and kill the thing and we're going to take it. That would have been more understandable. Um, but it, no, 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 no. All they needed was just any alpha zombies had. And, and, and none of those was even about that. And then you have Burke betraying these people left and right. I, I don't even know why, because he didn't even care about the money. It's like they cared about the money. 
uh, he, the Burke didn't care about the money. So, you know, what? why why kill all these people? Why send them all to their deaths? The only reason I can think of is maybe they don't want them blabbing about it. But, you know, if you're hiding the thing and you're keeping it in a bag, why would that matter? Um, yeah. So, yeah, none of this was thought out at all. And they even stole a scene right from Aliens where there's a scene where he slams the door in her face and he's yeah. looking through, you know, so it was like right from the, the Burke scene in Aliens where he slams the door in Ripley's face. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. After a confrontation earlier about, oh, I, you know, I don't trust you. And if I see you doing this, I'll, you know, I'll kill you and, and all this. I'm like, why are you telling him? You're practically telling him to kill you, which is yeah. exactly yeah. what happens. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's just, it, 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 it's really incredible. And it's like, I, I want to give Zack Snyder the benefit of the doubt and not saying that he's stealing these scenes, but man, it's like some of it was so on point. I, I, and, you know, yeah, the Left for Dead stuff, I think is in the cultural zeitgeist, you know, the, the mm -hmm. standard zombie fighting tools and zombie fighting games and stuff. So I'll give him a pass on that. But the scenes that were right out of Aliens, yeah, man, I, I, it, it feels like it was, it was lifted right out of that movie and, and brought yeah, into this one. The, 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 yeah, I mean, it's one thing that to have influences and to use them and to bring them in, but I mean, you've got to hide them a little better than that, or at least twist them. So at least you're saying, yeah, we're going along with the gag, and we're just, you know, and we'll subvert your expectations in an interesting way. And you'd think mm -hmm. Snyder would have done something like that because he likes to, you know, to to shock people. No, that that didn't happen. It was just basically. Uh, the same, the same thing as as aliens, and uh, yeah, that was really kind of disappointing, and and not yeah. done well either. Yeah. Now that said, there were a couple other cultural things that I think were lifted, but done in interesting ways, and and the one I want to talk about, and and I'm curious to see if you have any other ones. Um, the scene with the vault that mm -hmm. they tied into Ring of the Nebulums with Wagner and uh, was very reminiscent of the vault scene from Die Hard where mm -hmm. they played Ode to Joy. But here they play in that uh, very uh, ominous, you know, Wagner music from the ring, you know, that, that God, don't make me pronounce that German word. It's like German is is hard Gotcha to say. Wrong, I believe it was. Yeah, <laughs> but... It was a real, that was a cool moment. And then, you know, and this is going to transition into the next part, but the use of music there, I thought was very cool because when they mm -hmm. first see the vault, he uses a piece of music from uh, that uh, opera, which is very ominous and gives you the sense that, holy crap, this vault is going to kick their ass, you know? And then when the vault opens, it was very cool as well. So I enjoyed that. And, and I thought it was straight out of some other vault scenes that we've seen sim in similar same thing with oceans 11 when they get the vault open uh die hard when they get the vault open so i i enjoyed that but it was different enough that i thought that was yeah it, it's kind of hard to find a variation to you know opening the vault and making it look cool i think i think the way snyder did it was reasonable yeah yeah so i enjoyed that so that brings us into music though oh boy now we're starting to get into bad territory um we need an intervention. We really need an intervention. Snyder is getting a really bad habit of taking music and or taking versions of music that have just been, I mean, there are two songs in here that are absolutely raped. And the thing that really gets me is that he included a couple songs, he included the zombie by the cranberries untouched, you know, which was mm -hmm. fine. And it fits. He included of all the songs not to change, he put uh, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me by Culture Club in there, untouched. Okay, fine. You know, nothing wrong with that song, but okay. You know, but then he has a song, he has Viva Las Vegas from Vi Elvis Presley that is slowed down and, and just melodramatic. So, of course, and why does he do that? So he can stretch out the song and do what? slow motion oh my god there's so much slow motion in this movie the whole opening sequence is slow motion and then there's another slow motion sequence uh with the clearance creep uh CCR. rising by ccr and that song is absolutely horrid and um 
But I, I want to touch on those two scenes individually because I have problems with the scenes themselves and the music. So let's hit Viva Las Vegas first. What did you think of the version of Viva Las Vegas they used and then the sequence that they did? Uh, I, it was eye rolling. I, honestly, I really, I, and I have to say, yes, my, Zack Snyder has this thing with slow motion. He thinks that it makes it more dramatic to slow things down. Yeah. And he does that in in this opening and for no reason. And and honestly, I, I really have a problem with recapping everything that happened um, with a music video, this extended music video with this song that is over the top and ridiculous and nowhere near as good as Elvis. Like, it's like, wh why do you have a song that is associated with Elvis, inviting comparison with Elvis? And then you have this, this ridiculous over the top remake um, you know, that just takes you out of the movie. And in addition to this, I just think trying to establish character, you know, with this extended music video thing, rather than like getting us, get, getting us to let us, let us know them gradually. Um, mm -hmm. all we do, okay. There may be a couple of points that are kind of worth showing like, um, uh, Bautista having to kill his wife. Okay. That is an important establishing point for his character. Uh, fine. Include that. But at the same time, it's like a lot of the stuff was just so that he could have these cool visuals, like he could have this topless dancer zombies going in there and killing everybody. And, you know, all of these ridiculous, you know, over the top shooting scenes with the military and and, and all of these things that he thinks looks cool uh, in slow motion, because, you know, everything has to be slow motion. Um, it's not as bad in some, like, I, I was more annoyed, like, by Marilyn Manson's uh, take on the Eurythmics and Sucker Punch. That, to me, is, like, the all-time low uh, Snyder music video moment for me. Um, the Ancient Lamentations from uh, from <laughs> the Snyder Cut were not that great either. But this, mm -hmm. I would say, between, the one that was up there for me was the CCR one, though. That that was awful. We'll get there in a second. Yeah. This 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 Viva Las Vegas, uh, it was annoying to me, but it was funny because to me it sounded like a bad lounge singer act yeah. in in yeah. Vegas. You know, uh, anybody who's been to Vegas has seen this guy. You know, the guy's up there. He's like, oh, no, dude, dude. you know, he's like saying like, and then they, and then the zombie Elvis impersonator to 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 drive the point even further. Yeah. So, I mean, and it was just, and then it just kept getting worse from there. And then it was just all slow motion. And it's like, if this movie had been released next year and we had been far enough away from Zack Snyder's Justice League, it might have been okay. But on the back of that, where slow motion was a thing, and then to see this, where slow motion is a thing again, I was just shaking my head. It and then I have to comparison. Yeah. And then I have to say, you know, I apologize if this comes off misogynistic. It's not supposed to be that way. I love me a good pair of breasts, but if I never see zombie breasts again, I, it will never be too soon. It's like I, I, I didn't know that's a thing that I don't want to see, but I don't. I just didn't want to see it. I was like, who thought this was a good idea to see what purpose topless does it zombies? Serve? Yeah. What purpose does it serve? I mean, it, you know, nobody wants to look at it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's just, you know, shocking just to be shocking. It's the same thing, you know, that Snyder usually does. There's yeah. no reason for it. And 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 it, it wasn't even shocking in the classic horror movie trope, where which yeah. is ridiculous, where the woman is walking, running around nude. Because here is the zombie covered in blood and gore and everything, half dead, with her, her breasts jiggling around as she's tearing people apart. I'm just like, and there's several of them. I was like. Yeah, I I don't want to see that. I'm not into that fetish. It's it's not me, you know. Maybe it is for uh, somebody yeah. else. Maybe if you're a necrophiliac, <laughs> you know, otherwise yeah. I don't see what the appeal is. Yeah, so I, I just didn't get it. So yeah, let's get into the to, to the second part, which I thought was much worse, which was this horrible rendition. And I, you know, and I went and I looked at the credits at the end, and it looks like this is an officially released version of this song by some artist and. God bless you. You know, you could make whatever art you want, but please, I don't want to listen to it. It was horrible. An absolutely horrible version of CCR. I mean, Bad Moon Rising is already not a fast song. And they they slowed the song down by about 50 or 60%, made it into an Adele melodrama. I mean, that's exactly what it sounds like. 
and then it's sung by a female singer with no rock behind it you know it's like uh easy listening type instrumentals and stuff like that i was just like what have you done to this song add to that that this song didn't even fit you know, if they had used Bad Moon Rising, the CCR version, it might have fit. Even yeah. then, I think the song choice was strange. What was going on, which is the different people going to their caches of weapons and arming themselves to go into the city. I was like, this is a this is an arming montage. And 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 you know, Bad Moon Rising really doesn't fit here. The easy listening version of Bad Moon Rising really doesn't fit here. And then it's in slow motion on top of everything else, you know? <laughs> because everything has to be in slow motion. Even the music is in slow motion because of the Zack Snyder yeah. film. Actually, yeah. if I were to use any any uh, CCR piece, it would have been Fortunate Son. Because generally when you talk about like arming montages, you know, mm -hmm. that, that that's usually like a song that's kind of associated with, with the Vietnam War and things like that. So there would have been some cause to use that. But Bad Moon Rising, really? And, and yeah. it just seems like every so often it's because like maybe one line out of a song, you know, appealed to Zack Snyder. So that's why he had to throw yeah. it in. Like he only threw in Culture Club uh, for that one like last line uh, that he showed at the end and then he cut it off. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. so it, it's clear like it's, he's trying to make those kinds of connections, but it's just like, no, man, it doesn't work. And but, on top I of mean, that, you know, the slow motion is just awful. I mean, if you want to use Bad Moon Rising in this movie, it probably would have been more appropriate, you know, in the Viva Las Vegas part. You know, where some, you know, so, uh, you know, even though I was going to say if they had used Elvis Presley's version of Viva Las Vegas while all that was going down and it was like in, in regular motion, it might have been pretty cool, you know, but yeah. Zack Snyder wants to stretch it out. And and that's another thing to say is that he's using slow motion in all these scenes like he needs to find time. This movie was two and a half hours long. Yeah. Can the man make a movie that is not two and a half hours long anymore? I, I don't yeah. think he can. I don't think he can either. And I will add like one other thing is that at least in the Snyder cut, um, he had some justification for slow motion in certain scenes. Like he had the flash. Okay. I don't mind slowing down time. If you're doing a, a scene about the flash, you know, that's where that works. It right. does not work here. No, it's not at all. Right. No, I, I absolutely agree with you. You know, it's just that I think he overused it and used it in, in, in places where it wasn't appropriate, but it wasn't that bad yeah. here. It was like, Every single time he wanted to do anything action wise, it's like he's in love with his action sequences and wants to uh and show everything in slow motion. It's like and draw it all out. Yeah. You need to be more judicious about it, man. He thinks he also seems to think that um slow motion makes it more dramatic and all of that. Yeah. No, it's it's just over the top and ridiculous. And you know, you're taking people out of the movie and you're slowing down an already overly long film. Yeah. Not only that. I have to ask some serious questions. Once again, you know, maybe I'm, I'm I'm reading too much or analyzing this movie too much, but some of these people's personal arsenals, I'm like, first of all, uh, what is going on here? You know, what some of them have them just, you know, in their locker, in a in a garage or whatever, and then the one dude has his his um, saw and stuff like buried in an oil can in the diddle of the desert what is that about you know mm -hmm. and then the one that really got me in, and i was literally howling in laughter i had to turn the movie off because i was getting tears in my eyes was batista's weapon um once again these are people that know absolutely nothing about weaponry at all batista's uh ar-15 first of all we're supposed to believe it's an ar-15 it's not because these ARs are all firing uh, fully automatic, you know. Um, even the military doesn't have fully automatic M16s anymore. They're three-round burst. You cannot find, you know, outside of an MP5 or an MP4, uh, which are submachine guns technically, you don't have fully automatic weapons that are personal weapons anymore unless you get into like a machine gun, like a squad automatic weapon or something like that. So that's number one. Um, there are ways to modify it. it you know, we're going on, I'm going on a tangent. The other thing though, is I'm looking at Batista's weapon. These C people seem to believe that uh, people who have weapons are just putting every accoutrement they can onto these weapons. And so a Batista's weapon has iron sights. It has a scope on it. It has not a laser pointer, a laser or, you know, a laser sight, 
a laser rangefinder on it. I'm like, what the hell does the man have a laser rangefinder? I mean, literally, it was a box like this. It's a laser rangefinder. I'm like, that is for artillery or or if you're playing golf, you know, or something. It's like, what in the hell is going on here? And, and he had a couple other things, too. And I'm so I'm looking at this weapon. I was like, I, I just, it boggles the mind. And it's like, for the love of God, Hollywood, please. Get somebody that knows weapons instead of somebody who's just saying, well, this would look cool. Let's slap this on there, too. And now I ever established that. where Batista learned how to use any of these weapons? No. Not at all. They all no. The only background we get is he somehow saved the Secretary of Defense in, in Las Vegas, which I'm like, wouldn't he have his own protective detail? And what was yeah. the guy doing in Vegas anyway? So yeah. so all of that, that, and that's the all we know about his background. We don't know where he trained. We don't know if he was actual military. I assume he served. He must have. Uh, well, to, to know anything of what he's doing. But, you know, it's we're just left to sort of guess these things. And and like we talk about on Sloppy Spoilers, we should not have to do the work of the movie. And they're making us do the work of the movie. Well, not only that, there, I mean, it's just everything with weapons. And, and, I, and I know I keep harping on this in various podcasts, but it's like I really wish that – I understand now why there is so much misconception from certain groups of people in this country – about what weapons can and can't do, right. what things, how things work, because all they're get, they're getting all their information from Hollywood, and it is just ridiculous. Another point was with the knives. You know, um, granted, this is a zombie movie, and we're not supposed to look too closely at it, but people are stabbing people willy nilly in the head, and and they just slide it slides in and out like it's hot butter, man. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, no, you're going no, through no. bone and stuff there. After a while, you know the knife is going to get it's going to get chipped it's going to break it's going to get stuck you know these knives slide in and out every time no knife ever gets stuck no knife ever breaks it's just like the other thing is like they're firing weapons on on automatic all the time i i got to give them credit for you know not endless magazines but no weapon ever jams you know it's like i have fired nip 16 on on full automatic i think once in my life did i get through 30 rounds or 20 rounds without the damn thing jamming seriously it's like that's why you don't fire a full automatic it's like it's just it's gonna jam on you it's gonna double feed and then when you uh, it's just it's a nightmare i'll just leave it at that so yeah completely unrealistic everything about uh the way that they've been handling all the weapons and all these people being trained and it's just impossibly good i i kind of i'm able because i don't have like all that grounding that you have i mean i can turn it off a little bit and say okay they they somehow can do this you know, and I can let that go. So you can you can you can enjoy it on a dumb fun level if you're not trained. But you know, if you have your kind of background and you know this kind of stuff and it's all instinctive, uh, you're going to look at this and say, where where what are they doing and why are they not getting actual Hollywood experts? Yeah. Because it's completely implausible, as you say. Yeah. And and I think there's some really cool things that you could do within the rounds of realism. It's like, uh, you know, I'll I'll give you an example before we move on because I don't want to take this whole time to you know, educated people on weapons, but, you know, you start firing a weapon long enough, um, you know, the barrel starts to heat up. So does yeah. the, um, the, the chamber, you know, that's one of the reasons that the round, the rounds start to, um, that you could jam because the chamber starts to expand because everything's heating Well, the mm-hmm. barrel heats up, you know, that barrel will start to glow red hot, you know, that would be cool. It's like the barrel's going red hot and now he's like slicing through people or burning people with the red hot barrel because he was attacking them and doing stuff and everything. You know? That actually should be playing against them because the heat is what drags, attracts the zombies. We saw that. So well, that, what they should be doing is the more that they're getting into these fights, uh, the more that they are telling the zombies, hey, we're here, have some lunch. That's a great point. That is an absolute great point. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, 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 it will heat up to the point where um, even the rounds coming out, the spent shell casings, they will burn the hell out of you. You know, so it's like, uh, yeah, the amount of heat coming off all that is, is no joke. So, I mean, just those little things, and and they're not huge, but there are ways to work them into the story, and it would be cool and give some realism to it, you know. Yeah. So, actually, I wish they would. Do- I, I would be well. I would actually be very very interested in seeing a story where you have to deal with the tension of okay, you know, we have all these weapons, but we can't use them too much, and so you have to kind of decide, okay, are we going to play it stealthy, or are we going to have to like hold the line and defend ourselves and tell them where we are. That if that had actually been worked into the movie somehow and actually had been part of the the tension in the film, that could have made it really interesting. But no, uh, they, they had to go and play the Snyder way. 
you just reminded me of another point on the weapons and this will be my last point and then we'll move on to something else is that um another thing they've clearly established in this timeline and i think it's established in most zombie movies now is that these things are attracted to sound so if they're mm -hmm. attracted to sound why aren't all of your weapons suppressed you know why don't you yeah. have suppressor on everything on your your handguns on your on your rifles everything why are you why are you going in there and then there was that weapons? one explosion and then there was that one explosion that they caused i'm like yeah you're just told every single zombie where you are and congratulations that was a smart move yeah so um yeah i remember thinking that at one point i think it was when they were in uh one of the casinos and i was like yeah. you know if they were smart, all of their weapons would be suppressed and they wouldn't have to worry about, you know, what was going on as far as the, or less so, you know, because yeah, that's it was, all. Okay. Yeah. It was where, um, yeah, it was where Guzman uh, fired a shot into that woman's uh, gasoline and it blew up. That was what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, you know, it is what it is. And I think, what were we talking about? We were talking about music just now. So, um, what is the next part we're going to let's get into uh actual story and characters Let, let's do characters first um i think that you have, have pretty much summed it up which is there are no characters in this movie that you are actually rooting for uh i think the closest that i would come to would be the helicopter pilot has some interesting moments and some fun moments in a murdoch you know a team type you know a team sort of way uh, you know, she's annoying at some points, but eh, all right. And then uh, Batista's character has some moments where I'm kind of like, yeah, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to get into the actual dialogue between the characters yet, but just the actual characters themselves, none of them really stand out, do they? No, not at all. And I will say I was kind of a little annoyed with the uh, helicopter lady because um, I remember her. She is she is uh, one of the the characters on. Uh, she plays uh, one of the characters on Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> oh my god, I'm seeing this, and she plays it, her the exact same way. So it's like I don't think this woman can act. <laughs> she just plays the same character over and over. Uh, so it's like seeing her again. I just wasn't really really that fond of it. Though at least at least she kind of fit. She looks like the kind of person who should be like you know doing repairs uh, on the Razor Crest and the Mandalorian that, that kind of yeah. character. Um, well, so putting her in the role of the helicopter lady is fine. Um, yeah, Batista is okay, but you kind of like the the problem is he's the he's getting um, henpecked all over the place by all the women in the movie, and it's just like yeah okay. At, uh, at some I'll, point you want to yell with it. I, and I'm gonna be, I'll be blunt here. At some point you want to yell at him and be like, dude, stop being a <laughs> pussy. You know, it's like, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I will say the the character I, I rooted most for was the zombie tiger. <laughs> that was the character that I liked most, and he had the best scene in the movie. So you know, he, yeah. he did earn that. Oh, I have to say the character. Let, let's do that. Let's do a uh, character you like most and character you like least. So you like the zombie tiger the most. Who did you like least? Oh my god. Um, well, Burke obviously. I mean, you're supposed to dislike him though. Um, and also the daughter, uh, the Kate, uh, Kate uh, Bautista's daughter. She is annoying, and she gets them all killed. You know, there is no reason why Bautista should have brought her on there. No reason whatsoever. And on top of that, on top of that, you know, she's going in there to 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 go after this other woman that she's apparently friends with. I think there must have been like a romantic relationship there, because otherwise, I do not understand why she would do this. Um, well, why... I, I think it's even worse than that. I think she's insufferable in her self-righteousness. Yeah. And and that is why I can't stand her. She yeah. thinks she is better morally than yeah. everybody else in the film, especially and, her father. And, and I'm going to tell you like one point where she is completely, completely terrible. And that is like insisting on going on the trip, knowing that the two kids uh, by the woman she's trying to help um, have nobody watching over them. Like nobody at all. And she's like, oh, well, I'm the one who's taking care of the kids. Really? Then why don't you take care of the kids? Because nobody is around to take care of them now. And you are leaving them by yourself. And and on top of that, you know, Bautista said, yeah, I'm going to go look for her. You know, and even if you can't trust him, I mean, you know, you have other people that you know that are in his corner, like uh, not Barrett. <laughs> Like he because he was sticking up for her at one point. It's like, okay, maybe you can't trust your dad. Can you trust this guy? 
just yeah. ask him to go look for him for her and it's just no there's no reason and then on top of that um her going in there gets everyone killed because she was the one who sneaks out of the um of the casino letting the zombies in uh in there uh, by leaving that um that that grate open and then she goes out there you know decides to rumble run back but it's too late and then on top of that um she's the one who diverts batista um into going over and fighting the alpha when he could have left with plenty of time to spare and all the money yeah it's absolutely stupid she gets them all killed and she is as you say uh insufferable and self-righteous she is a load on the entire team and she should never have been allowed to go along yeah yeah i mean and and so let's get into it now you know it's like I, i agree with you my my favorite character I don't know if I have a favorite character. I mean, it, it might be, uh, you know, I, I don't think I have a favorite character, to be honest with you. I mean, That's there's why a couple. I went with the tiger. Yeah, at, least a, the, at least the tiger is awesome and gets to do cool things, and he kills the one of the one of the worst characters yeah. in the movie. So I, I'm I'm happy with the zombie tiger. Uh, Batista, when he's when he's actually you know standing up for himself, I guess is okay for me. Um, yeah, my worst character is the daughter as well. And and let's get into it. Let's 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 get right into what's really bad here. And the really bad part is is different parts of the story and and the storytelling and the dialogue. And and I'm going to go right to the daughter. You know, the daughter is insufferable and arrogant and self-righteous right from the very beginning. You know, right from the very beginning, there's a part uh in the opening sequence where Batista has to kill his wife because his wife turned into a, a zombie. And it's mm-hmm. the intimation is that uh the daughter hates him because um, she he killed her you know her mom you know so right away I'm hating the daughter already because I'm like what kind of of just self centered brat I mean because this is not a a girl she's an adult you know and I'm like oh you you witch. it's like you and, know? and do you not realize that he saved your life by doing yeah. this he and, saved and, you. And he killed his wife. You don't think he's hurting too? Yeah. And then, and then we come to find out later. And 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 I definitely want to hear your thoughts on this. Both of the women, you know, there's these two. Another woman that he brings, who he teamed up with, and and these this group of civilians was was saving people in Las Vegas. This is not like we have trained military people to do this. Civilians were going in there and bringing people survivors out of Vegas. But so he had this team. And and they later go in with him on this bank heist, and one of them is this is this lady, and both the the daughter and this lady take moments while time is ticking down. A nuclear bomb is going to be dropped on the city, and they want to talk about their relationships with him. And they take like five or ten minutes each to talk about relationship problems. You know, at that point, if it was me, I'd be like. Can we table this discussion until a nuclear bomb is not going to drop on us and a horde of zombies is not going to overwhelm us? Maybe we have other shit to focus on right now, you know? Yeah, they, they, it's just all this forced drama. And, and on top of that, I just get I just got flashbacks to Picard because it's yeah. bad enough when you have the daughter doing this. I mean, you can say, okay, it's just her, you know, being insufferable and annoying. Okay, mm-hmm. fair enough. But then you have the other one who's like, you know, uh, why didn't you go and, t- and and you know pick up on this on these signals that I had no idea she was giving off and probably Batista yeah. didn't either. And why, you know, it's like, you know, how about maybe we talk about our relationship and you know whatever we are to each other, you know, after we get out of here, especially yeah. since she's supposed to be more professional and more sensible at least you know, than the daughter is because she's, you know, they, they, these people have been working together a long time and she, you know, they've been working together and she, up to that point, she had been perfectly, you know, reasonable in terms of the way that she had been acting. But no, we have to stop all this, you know, in the middle of a fight with zombies when we have to get out, uh, you know, quickly with the money. No, 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 no. Now, now I'm going to lecture you about, you know, how you done me wrong, even though, yeah. you know, he's just mostly been a clueless dude. That's all and he's it- been. And at that point in the movie, they know that the nuclear bomb has been pushed up. So they have like less than an hour before the bomb is dropped. They know that there's zombies after them. I -hmm. mean, and of course she dies right after this, you know, to give him full on guilt. But in the stupid, stupid way possible. Why would, why would they snap her neck? Why not bite her? 
you know, it's it's just yeah, and the whole the whole it, it's all to have that pathos. It's like oh, you know, I've been you know I've been wasting my time with her, and and now look at what happened because I didn't act sooner. <laughs> yeah. No, this is stupid. This but, is ridiculous. But right away, I mean, right from the very beginning of the movie, I know Batista was screwed because he has gone on the wrong end of the self righteous woman, his daughter. Who thinks that she's better than him? So I'm like, mm-hmm. you're you're eff, dude. You're 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 a dead man. Yeah. You're dead man walking. And then all these scenes later on. But the thing that really gets me, and 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 we talk about this, and and I'm sorry if this offends anybody, but it's like this is peak wokeness. This is peak wokeness because you cannot write a man to be like a man. All right, Batista's character in this is supposed to be a man, even the most sensitive man in this situation. You know. I'm a guy who plays, you know, has tea parties with his daughter, does dress up, plays dolls, does all this, goes to ballet recitals, helps them, all of those things, helps around the house. I am, you know, and I'm very proud of that. But at the same time, I am a man. And there are certain things that just push my buttons. And this would be one of those things that would just send me over the edge. It's like, we are sitting here. I am trying to get you out of here alive. There are a bomb is going to drop on us, nuclear bombs. I didn't pick up on the signals. You know what? I've been there. I'm a dude. I miss signals from my wife of almost 25 years. But you want to talk about this now? I'd be like, can, can is there any more shit that you could heap on me right now while I'm trying to deal with this? I mean, I would be like, I would not have reacted the way he did. It's like, no, it's just, no, I wouldn't have you. It's horrible writing. It would have been, if anything, I would have just walked off. You know, it would have been like, yeah. I can't talk about this right now. Let's get the hell out of here or something. You know, okay, yeah, save this until, until we're not getting almost killed. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I will say, like, this is a complete, like, this is a really dumb thing to do in a high octane action movie. And you should, you know, honestly, it's like you do not know who your audience is. This is not. This is this is completely incongruous with your with you know your audience and and what you're trying to give them. I I don't know well, why that's even there. Well, that I mean, and that is absolutely fair, and that is a great point as well. Now, the first the the conversation with the daughter, where we come to find out that the daughter wasn't mad at him because she killed. Uh, he Mother killed him. the mother, but because he wasn't understanding enough and everything, it's like woman. He's like he was going through crap too. But but the person who brought that conversation up was Batista. Okay, which mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But okay, let, let's roll with it. But the second conversation, okay, they know what kind of situation they're in, and this woman decides to start having a relationship discussion, like a a a. a man woman relationship discussion not father daughter i was like i don't think any woman is doing that either to be perfectly honest with you you know it's like especially not yeah. that woman the way she's written she's a woman of action she's sensible and everything and then suddenly she wants to stop in the middle of the zombie apocalypse and talk about, about where one. where they are in their relationship i'm like yeah the, the, and i will say this movie in general has a problem with like knowing when you know to put the character scenes because uh, here you have, you know, Batista going into in, into the uh, casino. You know, he's shooting zombies. And meanwhile, the daughter and the coyote are, are standing in there having a girl talk about, you know, the stuff that's going on with them. You know, and it's like the area is not even secure yet. Why aren't you helping clear out the zombies? And then you can talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. And so and, and, I, and I'm going to put this squarely on Zack Snyder and whoever wrote this film. It's like, look. If you're going to make a stupidly over the top, ridiculous zombie action flick that is not realistic and everything, go for it. More power to you. Please don't ruin any more songs, but, uh, you know, make your movie. But it's like, for the love of God, why do you keep putting melodrama and just stupidity into these movies, especially when you're not good at it? You're just not good at it. You know, it's like, I don't know if it's the woke aspect. I don't know if it's just he 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 doesn't understand real people at all. But none of it comes off as realistic at all. Yeah, yeah I think shape. you should just focus. I think you should just focus on the over the top action and and all the cool stuff going on because you know he's always been more of a style over substance director. And whenever mm-hmm. he's and, and writer, and whenever you start, he starts getting into substance. That's when he fails. Just stick with yeah. the stylistic stuff and and just you know focus on what you're good at. I mean, and and we we saw 
I mean, let's go back and examine his career just for a, a minute. You know, 300 was just pure action, you know, yeah. and, and there yeah. were some, you know, and he just recreated the graphic novel. And I think it was a great film. It looked great. Yeah. It was shot great. Mm -hmm. Watchmen had a lot of really great stuff. But when he lapsed into relationship stuff with Lori and uh, Dan, mm -hmm. it was it was insufferable at parts, you know, and then yeah. you add in hallelujah on top of it when he climaxes everything. And just like, oh, you I, know. I will say, I will say the best musical choices in Watchmen were actually Alan Moore's because uh, all along the Watchtower, that was more, that was actually in the graphic novel. Yeah. So, you know, where he stuck with that, that had a problem. I, I, I didn't like the ending when he tried yeah. to change, like, you know, um, the whole thing about, oh yeah, it was all about Dr. Manhattan all the whole time, not about the giant squid. Well, the yeah. giant squid wasn't wasn't all that great, but it was better than than having Doctor Manhattan work because it well, opened up a bunch of problems. I don't know if it was Alan Moore that chose this song, but I thought the unforgettable stuff with the fight scene between the comedian and Osman Dias was pretty good. You know, so I don't remember. I think it may have been, but I can't remember. Yeah, so I didn't mind that, but yeah, so it's like I I wish he needs to be more focused on the movie he's making instead of trying to do he needs to get somebody else to it. write the scripts for him I, I i think that's a big problem because at least in his first two films the ones that we like <laughs> they were adaptations you know written by other people frank M uh, miller and alan moore respectively and then yeah. you know all of that so and he, and you know and even with man of steel he had christopher nolan and and, and david goyer and people like that so yeah. you know you might say that they didn't they, you know that they had problems or you know maybe we had problems with this or that but at least he had actual storytellers you know that he was working with um here he seems to have written the whole thing himself and and it's like yeah no get us get a script writer please <laughs> yeah and i don't really understand and you know and this goes further into the story is like the motivations of these different people uh, i don't understand why he is adding into into this what is clearly a, what you've already said a heist movie that has mm -hmm. zombies in it Sure. why he is adding these other elements into the movie why are they necessary no, um not. except that he wants to make points you know he wanted to make points he wanted to make some political commentary uh he wants to make some points about uh you know i guess he, he was talking like he I, I know he mentioned there was a story somewhere or at least a headline somewhere where they where he kind of talked about oh yeah i wanted to make a, a point about the border and it's yeah. like you know you're a little out of date, dude. Yeah. Um, well, not that, a, that that whole thing, that whole that that president that you're talking about is no longer there. And you can yeah. tell he was talking about. You can tell he was talking about a certain orange person. Um, you know, when they talk about the the president moving the date, it sounds like something that the last person would have done, not the current person. Yeah, I mean, it, it absolutely is. It talks about how oh, it would be cool and patriotic to see something blow up. It's like. So, yeah. you know, you're telling us exactly, A, how you felt about the last president, you know, and, and everything. And, and like you said, it's out of date. It doesn't fit. And, and you know, whatever. You can do whatever you want. But uh, yeah. it, it, it's just so blatant. And I just don't understand why he had to stick it in there, you know. Not to mention that they brought in well, – I don't even understand why these people were paid. They brought in Donna Brazil and Sean Spicer, of all people, to do political commentary – on dropping bombs on zombies, which, by the way, human rights groups are fighting for the zombies, which are supposed to be, I don't know, uh, a stand-in for illegal immigrants, maybe? Or are the illegal immigrants the people sneaking <sighs> into the zombie yeah. area? You yeah. know, it's like, why are you bringing... And I ask this for a lot of people. It's like, yes, I mean, there are movies where people bring their political, you know, whatever their political feelings are into them. And then there are movies that are made to just be enjoyed, you know. Yeah. I don't understand this this need by certain people to bring their political proclivities into something that is just ridiculous like this movie. So. Yeah, I think the problem for me is that a lot of times when they do this, they just don't do it very well. You know, it seems like they just want to get on their soapbox and say, okay, these people I don't like are bad. And, and, and that's the only thing that I have to say. Rather mm -hmm. than actually, you know, making some intelligent points about society or or drawing attention to an issue or or something that is legitimately worth saying. Um, well, Watchmen, I mean, Watchmen, as an example, was something that had something legitimately worth saying. Um, you know, they were talking about nuclear Armageddon in 1980s in the 1980s. 
Um, well, not so, only yeah, that, but, so yeah, it was obvious that Alan Moore is no fan of Nixon, yeah, and no. uh, and uh, but at the same time, does Nixon dominate the movie? No, no. Nick, Nixon no. is. I mean, a, it's nuance. It's nuance, and it's and, it, and at least it's written intelligently, you know, yeah. and with a and with a knowledge of the issues and and worked in you know in a way that it doesn't detract from the entertainment side of it. Yeah, um, Nixon. It, that's yeah, Nixon. Nixon is a background character that gives you some feel for the general mood of, of what's mm-hmm. going on in the, the wider world. And, um, but it's obvious that the way Nixon is written, you know, especially since Nixon is president for longer than he was in real life and everything, uh, you know, Alan Moore has a clear, you could clearly tell that he has no great feelings for Nixon and that's fine, yeah. you know, yeah. because it fits into that world. So I, I absolutely agree with you. And yeah, it um, seems like here what they what they were she was trying to do was uh, just to throw them in for a cheap joke, but it's yeah. not funny, <laughs> and it's and it doesn't say anything you know intelligent about anything. Yeah, not to mention that I, I think when you come off that obvious, you know, when you're that obvious at what you're taking shots on and at what your disdain is, you know, it's like I know plenty of people that could watch Watchmen who might have been who either voted for Nixon if they were old enough to vote for Nixon or or you know felt different ways about it or whatever who could watch that movie and still take it in and enjoy it but i i don't understand these people who want to take political shots either from the right or the left yeah and alienate half their audience you know and also nixon i mean even in 19 in the 1980s you know as a kid having read this thing it's like I, Nixon was distant enough for me that, you know, I didn't have any real feelings about him because I didn't know anything about him, you know, right. when I first read it. And so, you know, you, there's a certain advantage in removing yourself from the current situation, but at the same time using, you know, these historical figures as a way of informing the points that you want to make, um, That's a great, you know, with a certain a amount point. of subtlety. And I think that he did that. Um, this yeah. is not what they're doing. They're using modern day pundits to say nothing. That's a, that's a really great point. Yeah, um, other story elements that uh, just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, I think your point about the whole heist, why they're going there to do the heist, I think is really well taken, especially when they find out. See, this one really begged the question for me. When they find the other set of plans and they find the second team that mm-hmm. died trying to get into this place, I was like, what, what happened to the guy who was trying to get a body? Yeah. How did that fail? What what was going on there? You know, when we come to find out what the real plan was and they they unveil all this other stuff, um, the whole point of the movie starts to fall apart for me. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense at all. I don't know why they were doing that. And again, it just goes to show why even go into the vault? There was no reason to go into the vault. All they wanted was the, the head of the of the of the zombie queen. And they could have done that in any number of ways. So, you know, why go to through this elaborate you know, scheme, yeah. not just once, but like two or three times or possibly more, it, you know, it, it, it's ridiculous. Especially when, and here's the thing, you know, and, the, and I'm, I'm going to tie it up in a second, but the whole point of what you're saying is so well taken because within five minutes of them getting into Vegas, going through the wall and getting into Vegas, they run into this woman, you know, because they shot that security guard. Why wouldn't they just grab her right there and hightail it the hell out of Vegas, you know? Yeah. It's just hightail it back through the wall, take her, and be like, look, you guys are going to get paid $200 million anyway. Let's get the hell out of here, you know? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, all they, that's all they needed to do. There, there was no need to go all the way into the casino, mm-hmm. you know, except that they want to do the heist. And that's why, you know, whatever that they – if you're going to have a twist, okay, fine – but the twist needs to require them to go into the vault because otherwise you're just, you know, completely wasting your time and you're, you're not validating why these characters are there. You're not validating, you know, why they're going through all this effort to go into there. You're not validating the, you know, why do you have this lock picker, you know, mm-hmm. and all, all of this, all of this, why do you need any of this when you can just go in, you know, behead the zombie queen and just, you know, walk away with her head. Uh, yeah. Especially since she seems to love running around at the edge of town for no reason. And I would say, once again, I think this is a problem with storytelling from Zack Snyder because he had two cool ideas mm-hmm. and he couldn't settle on either one of them. So he decided to use both and ruin them both. Yeah. Because it's like if he had stuck with the idea of trying to get an alpha zombie, and let's say that you had to get a particular alpha zombie 
that would be a reason for them to go in there and have to yeah. go wade through everything. Or he could have made a cool movie about how these people were greedy and yeah. they brought their own death upon themselves being greedy to go in there to this money. You know, it's like, it's, it, and, and it tells a powerful story about how people will do stupid stuff for money, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that and you could have them, you know, shit. I, the thing of it is, is like early on, I was like, okay, they're all going to kill themselves to get the money or whatever is in there. Um, yeah. and, and I'm kind of kind of disappointed that we didn't see that, honestly, because there was yeah. this one point where Guzman comes in with two guys and it's like, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and, and bring these guys along. Are you, you, are you OK with that? And Batista's like, yeah, sure. Go ahead and bring them. And I'm like, yeah. wow, that's dumb, because, you know, if this guy was trying to stab you in the back, uh, you know, he's he could have very well brought his own muscle to do that. And you just let him bring you know, people that you're going to have to shoot later to get out of out of the town. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, so, so like all that stupid. And then you have people like blabbing about the fact that, yeah, we're going in to get tons of money. You want to come with us? Um, and they're letting people go with this knowledge. So it's yeah. like, yeah, these guys could tell anybody and you could end up fighting who God knows who, you know, in addition to the zombies and having to run out, um, uh, you know, before the new kids. I mean, yeah. there are so many ways that they could have gone wrong, and these people are are being careless with this information. I, I it's just ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, it just, I really think that Zack Snyder needs somebody looking over his shoulder, telling him, "Dude, just, just don't do that." You know, somebody editing. He needs an editor, or yeah. you know, or, or somebody a, a, else, yeah, a script advising. doctor or something. Yeah. I mean, even the thought, if you really stop and think about it, the whole zombie rights thing was kind of ridiculous. The whole idea that, that people are sneaking out in and out of a quarantine zone and that the soldiers were letting these people go in, you know, drive while they're evacuating was like, no, that, you know, it's just not, re not realistic at all. But yeah, you know, and I will say that I could, I could get away with a certain amount of that if the whole idea is that they're being comedic or they're just being over the top. But you have to be over the top the whole movie. You right. know, it's either go the whole way or, 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 you know, or scale back and try to be sensible about it because See, you can't go, you can't do both at the same time and expect all this stuff to fly. You just can't. And I think that's a great point to end on uh, this part of the discussion on, which is if this movie had been completely over the top and ridiculous with Elvis zombies and zombie tigers and everything the whole time, we would have effectively shot our brains off and just enjoyed what we were watching. But right. it tried to give us, uh, relationships and melodrama and political commentary and a bunch of other crap on top of it. And now you're asking us to think. And when we start looking at the, it's like looking at, uh, you know, a piece of art too closely. That's ugly. You know, it's like, if you just pass it, you know, you look at it in passing. You're like, yeah, that's all right. But if you want yeah, me to I actually mean, analyze it, <laughs> what's yeah. the best part of the movie? It's, it's the zombie tiger killing Burke. You know, yeah. th these kinds of over the top things. That's that's what it, this movie should have been focusing on. And it doesn't yeah. do it enough. Yeah. And when you ask us to stop and turn our analytical brains on and start to analyze this film, th then this film has some serious problems. So, yeah. All right. Cool. So uh, wrapping up the movie, if you had to give this movie a score from one to ten, um, wh what would you give it? Uh, I don't know. I. I... To be honest, it's like, okay, you can maybe, like, if you really shut your brain off, you can sit there and enjoy it. Um, and there are cool things in it. I, I don't feel like I, I, you know, I wasn't at any point where I was angry at the movie. I mean, there's some movies that make no sense that I'm angry at. I wasn't angry at this movie. Um, mm -hmm. And it looks visually good. I mean, there are some cool things in it. Um, I don't know. I would say maybe like a 6 or a 6.5 at most. Because I think it works well enough that you can watch it and get some enjoyment out of it in a shut your brain off way, but you know, asking for more than that, I think, is not reasonable because everything just falls apart uh, the moment that you put any thought into it. Yeah, I'm gonna say for me, I don't think this was the worst movie ever. Um, I I, don't, I wouldn't be as generous as you are, but I usually don't hand out really high scores anyway uh, mm -hmm. on a scale of one to ten, but. I think this movie falls squarely into a lot of those movies that are very um, just shut your brain down and just take yeah. it for what it is for me. So I think it's between like a 4.5, 5.5, somewhere in that range, you know, very middling, middle of the range, you know, middle of the road type yeah. movie where if you're looking for something on a Friday night, you've had a couple beers and you just want to throw something on and check it out. You know, this, mm -hmm. this movie will yeah. do. So, yeah. All right, cool. 
Well, uh, thanks for uh, being here for the for this uh, review of Army of the Dead, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't seen this movie, like I said, have a couple beers on a Friday night, grab some wings and some friends. Uh, it's a movie you can bag on and enjoy at the same time. You know, one of those types of films and check it out. Uh, Army of the Dead on Netflix by Zack Snyder. And uh, until next time, this is me signing out along with Shade Wing. Thanks for watching. And